Hey, we are still trying to find all the x-intercepts, trying to find all the factors, but we're starting with something that looks like this. So, um, what I would suggest you do, you can always graph it first, but if I would always suggest that you factor out what's common first. So, if you look, there's no number that divides in both numbers, but x is common. So, I know I have x times 27x cubed plus 8, right? Now then that means that if x is a factor, that means 0 is one of the x-intercepts. So I know one of the x-intercepts already is 0, because 0 makes this thing equal 0, right? 0 makes that one equal 0. So now this one, then once again, you just divide. Uh, I mean, excuse me, what am I saying? You just graph it x to the third and then plus 8. And what we're interested in is where the heck does that cross the x-axis? And it crosses the x-axis over here between 0 and negative 1. So what is that? I wonder. Once again, I'm going to find the intersection. Am I on the first curve? Yes, I am. Am I on the second curve? Yes, I am. Where do I think it is? I think it's right there. What is that? And they tell me negative 6, 6, 6, 6, 7, 2 thirds, right? Negative 2 thirds. Well, if negative 2 thirds is an x-intercept, what's the factor that's a real integer factor? What's the factor that goes with that? Well, you know you have to say x plus 2 thirds, and then you have to move this up in front. So this would be 3x plus 2. Right? Now then I have to divide into this guy. Right? So I have to divide into this guy. So I'm going to do 3x plus 2 into 27x third. Now there's not any x squareds and there's not any x's and there's a number at the end. Right? Let's get rid of that flashy light. There we go. Can you still see it? Well, it looks like it. Maybe we need a little more juice here. Huh? Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so 3 times not 9 looks like that would be 9x squared, yes? 9x squared, that'd be 27. 9 times that would be 18. Okay, subtract, subtract. That goes away, negative 18. Plus 0x's, right? 0x's. Then, I say, well, I can make that negative 18. No problem, that's minus 6, right? 6 times x, that would be negative 18. And then that would be negative 12. Okay, then you subtract, so that's minus minus. That makes plus. Q. 12x plus 8. How can I make that into 12? I need a 4, right? 4, that'd be 12. 4, what would be 8? Has to end in 0, right? Has to end in 0 because it's an x-intercept. So now I know the other factor. See, the other factor is 9x squared minus 6x plus 4. So here's first one factor. Here's another factor. Here's the last factor, right? I stop when I get a quadratic, so I'm going to write it right here. 9x squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay, now, what are the answers? So i got to go to quadratic formula. Type in my quadratic formula, 9 minus 6 plus 4. One-third, ooh, one-third plus... 0.577i and one third minus 0.577i. Oops, I <laughs> did exclamation point. Okay, did I find all four? I found four. There's supposed to be four, zero, two thirds, and then two imaginary ones. How about that? Two real ones, two imaginary ones. We did it. How about that? Okay, uh, that's factoring out what's common. 
Let's do one where we have to uh, use U substitution. Oh joy, what's that? Uh, all right. There we go. How about this one? Oops, that's not. Where's my Where's my U substitution problem? It ran away from me. Oh, uh, there it is. Ha. Okay. It just is hiding. That's all. All it is is hiding. Hiding from me. And now I have found it. Okay. We have x to the fourth minus 6x squared minus 40. Okay, now then, when we do, so uh, we can't factor out what's common because there's nothing common, right? There's uh, no number that divides into all three numbers because this is one, right? And then there's no letter common. So we can't factor out what's common. We're going to do something called U substitution, right? And what we're going to do is U is X squared. So everywhere there's an X squared, we're going to put a U. Why would I want to do that, you say? Why, why, why? Because of this reason right here. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, right? So if we say x squared times x squared, then what is that? That's u times u. What is that? u squared. Ha, ha, ha. Right? So if, if I replace the x squareds with u, then this is really u squared. Now, why would I want to do that, you say? Because it fits in the quadratic formula. That's why. So I go up here to my quadratic formula, and I say, well, hey, I know that's 1, 1, minus um, negative 6, and negative 40. Whoops, I goofed up. I clear that out. Start all over again. I put minus, I put subtract 6 instead of, so 1, negative 6, and negative 40. There we go. Now we're cooking. What do I get? I get two answers. And remember, that's u minus 10 and u plus 4. So if you can't see that, oops, you still can't see that, can you? Still can't see that. Okay, there we go. So the answers were 10 and negative 4, right? But those are the answers to the u substitution. So I have to make factors with u in it. So u minus 10, because it's the opposite of whatever answer I get, and u plus 4. Yay! Okay. But what is u? u's x squared. So this is really x squared minus 10 and x squared plus 4. Oh joy, right? That's what I've got. x squared minus 10 and x squared plus 4. Why? Because here I had x squared and I put u in its place. Then I could solve it because I could use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula right here. So I solved it, but then I had to plug back in x squared. So the reason I'm looking for is what x? What is x? I'm looking for the x-intercepts, right? Now, if you graph this puppy, you'll see that it crosses twice. There's two real and there's two imaginary, just like the last one we did. Um, what are the real ones? Well, this is one of those guys. x squared minus 10 equals 0. x squared equals 10. So, x equals the square root of 10 or negative square root of 10. So, those are the two real answers. And then what are the answers to this? Right? This is x squared equals negative 4. x equals the square root of negative 4. What's that? That's 2i and negative 2i. Four answers. Boom! Found all the real answers. Found the integer. We found the integer factors. Right? Because 
This wouldn't be an integer factor. These are nasty little decimals that go on forever and ever. And this isn't a real number, real integer factor, because these are imaginary. So this is what I'm looking for whenever I say I want integer factors. That's the answer to that one. Find all the zeros. That's the answer to that one. Okay? Woo! Let's do everything again. Okay. Let's do everything again. How about... This one. What about 2x to the third minus 34x squared minus 120x? Okay. Now here I can see that there's something common. There's an x common, so I'm going to factor what's common. Right? This is not one of those that I can use the quadratic formula on. I have to take out what's common. So I'm going to take out 2x. What's left when I divide everything by 2? And that would be x squared. That would be... Um, what's half of 34? 17. And that would be 60, yes? Okay, so see, there's 1. I took the x out, so there's no x there. There's just 1x. See, there we go. Now that one we can factor, that's easy, some easy. So if I go to my um, quadratic formula, I put in 1, negative 17, negative 60. Alrighty, so I get x, um, so I get the x-intercepts. I know if this is a factor, if this is a factor, then 0 is an x-intercept, right? And then I found the other x-intercept to be positive 20, and negative 3, right? So what does that mean? That means x minus 20, whoops, x minus 20, and x plus 3. So do I find all the factors? I did. I found all the factors. Did I find all the zeros? I did, right? Pretty easy. Factor out what's common. We are happy little campers, yeah? Let's do another one that's got the u substitution. Okay, so here we go. U substitution like this one. 4x squared minus 5x, 4x to the fourth, silly, minus 5x squared minus 9. Okay, so there's you can't factor out what's common. So I'm going to have to use u substitution. Substitution, right? u substitution. There we go. All right, so what does that mean? Remember, u is going to equal x squared. So everywhere there's an x squared, I'm going to put a u. And so if there's a x to the fourth, that really means x to the fourth is really x squared times x squared. So that really means u times u. Hey, that's u squared. Boom. All right, so everywhere there's an x squared, I put a u. So if there's an x4, I put a u squared. It's quadratic. Hallelujah. So let's do it. So I'm going to put in 4, negative 5, negative 9. I get the two answers come out to be... 9 fourths and negative 1. What does that mean? That means I'm going to have u minus 9 fourths and u plus 1, right? If those are the answers to my u. But remember, u is really x squared minus 9 fourths and x squared plus 1. Oh my goodness. Can't have that. 4x squared minus 9, and x squared plus 1. So it looks like those are my factors. Let's see. Actually, I think I can factor that one. I'm going to try. I'm going to put 4 and 0 and negative 9. Yeah, sorry, Bob. Okay, so this one is 3x minus 2 and... What? What? 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. And this one I cannot factor. 
right? because it's got um, imaginary answers. So I found all the real factors right there. Remember they have to be factors of x. Here I had factors of u. Right? Factors of u, I don't want those. I want factors of x. So here I have x squared. Can I factor this one? Yes, I can. Can I factor this one? No, it's got imaginary answers. So what are the answers? This one is 3 over 2. That one's negative 3 over 2. This one is the square root of um, negative 1. That's just i. And the square root of negative 1. There we go. Remember, if you solve this, this would be x squared equals negative 1. And if I take the square root, you know the square root of negative 1 is i. That's what we defined it to be. And negative i. So we got four answers just like we wanted. All right. That'll do it for today. Bye.